Hey guys, in this video we're going to begin looking at questions from chapter 5 in practice exam 1.2 in the fall 2021 semester. So these are all about stoichiometry. And in this first question we're asked to balance the equation below and then we're asked about the number of moles of HCl required to react completely with a given mass, 130 grams in this case, of gallium solids. So let's start by balancing the chemical equation and then proceed from there. So we've got gallium reacting with HCl to make GaCl3. The first thing I notice is that Cl only appears in HCl and GaCl3 and that we have one chlorine in HCl and three chlorines in GaCl3. So the ratio of the coefficients there has to be one to three. And so we can start, for example, by putting a three out front of HCl and that's aqueous and leaving everything else as is, at least for the time being. So GaCl3, aqueous, and H2 gas. And it becomes clear that since we put a three out front of HCl, we're now unbalanced on hydrogen. And with H2 on the product side, it's gonna be helpful to just double everything up. So let me go ahead and, and do that now. Two and six HCls now and two, and now rather than doubling H2 to get the right number of H's on the product side, this is gonna to need to be a three, three H2s in the balanced equation here, and I believe this will balance it. We've got two galliums, six hydrogens, and six chlorines on both sides. All right, so we're all balanced up now and ready to proceed to working with the actual stoichiometry. So we've got 130 grams of, of gallium solid, and Let's map this out to figure out what we know and where we're going. So we've got a mass of GA um, that we're gonna use as a reactant. What we want to know ultimately is the moles of HCl that will react completely, fully consume this given mass of gallium. We can't go directly from mass of one thing to moles of another thing. We've gotta go through the moles of that thing, the, the mass of which we were originally given, right? So we've got to go first from mass of gallium to moles of gallium, the number of gallium atoms, if you like, in the sample. And then from there, we can go to the moles of HCl using a mole-mole or, or molar ratio, a ratio of stoichiometric uh, coefficients. You'll also hear this referred to as a stoichiometric factor. So the first thing we're going to do here then is multiply by the moles per gram of gallium in other words, divide by the molar mass. And then to go from moles of gallium to moles of HCl, we're gonna multiply by a stoichiometric factor. Now we can actually build this factor out from the given equation. So for example, we can see that for every six HCls that react, two galliums react. And you can think of this on the scale of individual molecules or formula units, or all the way up to a mole. So we can write here six HCl for every two galliums, and this will sort of convert us, quote unquote, from moles of gallium to moles of HCl. And again, the six and the two came from that balanced chemical equation, so that's critical here. So now that we've mapped out this process, we can just go ahead and plug in our numbers, right? We have 130 grams of gallium given, and the grams per mole of gallium, that's going to come from the periodic table, and that is 69.72, and so we're, we're going to multiply by one mole divided by 69.72 grams for gallium solid, gallium metal. Gallium is actually, well, it's close to a liquid at room temperature, but not quite. And then we're gonna multiply by six over two or, or multiply by three to figure out the final answer. So let's plug all that in and see what we get. All right, so after following all this math, I ended up with 5.59 moles of HCl required to fully consume that given mass of gallium. And as a sanity check here, you know, does this seem about right? Well, yeah, we've got a little bit less than two moles of gallium in this 130 gram sample. And so it's gonna take a little bit less than six moles of HCl to fully consume that amount. In question 19, we're asked, what is the total mass of all substances present at the end of a reaction in which this mass of O2, 3.75 grams of O2, reacts with 
3.5 grams of NH3 according to the following equation and it looks it appears to be balanced and we can verify that or you can take my word for it that this is a balanced chemical equation. Enter your response without units to the nearest 0.01 grams. Now here is a good example of a question where you should pause and read and think carefully. What is the total mass in grams of all substances present at the end of this reaction? One way we could proceed is to think about this as a limiting reactant problem and proceed to figure out the number of moles of O2 that's there, the number of moles of NH3 that's there, all that good stuff, figure out the moles of product produced after 100% conversion and the mass of that product and then the masses of any leftover reactant that are present uh, as well. And here we've got two products, so we'd want to factor in the masses of both of those products as well as the limiting, the uh, excess reactant, sorry, that's left over at the end of the reaction. That is quite a rigmarole, and there's a shortcut for this that we can use that's worth pausing the video and thinking. A simpler way to approach this problem involves realizing that it's asking for the total mass of all material. And because of conservation of mass, the total mass of all material in the reaction mixture cannot change from the start to the finish. So given these initial masses of material, 3.75 grams and 3.5 grams of, of the reactants, the total mass at the end of the reaction must equal the total mass at the start of the reaction. That's conservation of mass. And so the total mass at the end of the reaction is simply 3.75 grams. Now at the end of the reaction, that's not necessarily O2. That mass has distributed itself between NO and H2O, but it's still there. And similarly with the NH3, 3.50 grams, well that's not all NH3 at the end of the reaction, but those nitrogens and hydrogens have redistributed themselves among the products H2O and uh, NO, but they're still there, right? So the total mass at the end of the reaction, not having to worry about any specific masses of any particular substance, that's just the sum of these two, and that's going to come out to 7.25 grams. And so this is a bit of a thinker, a bit of a tricky problem, but it comes down to just applying conservation of mass so that we don't even need to worry about this limiting reactant problem. We could do that problem, and in fact, we would arrive at the same answer, 7.25 grams, if we were being particularly careful, but we don't have to do that. The entire problem can be based on conservation of mass, and this is a great example where a little thinking goes a long way, right? A little thinking on this problem makes it very short, very easy.